Hi. Yes. Hi, How Army. are you? <laughs> Good. We'll talk at the same time. This is it, the whole, the whole time. time. I yeah, love this. Love it. Okay, you've worked with Luca Guadagnino before <laughs> uh, a few times. Yeah. How did you find the experience of working with Luca Guadagnino on Suspiria versus A Bigger Splash? I think that I just, um, because we have spent so much time together and I got to know him. Now I know him so well, so it <laughs> felt so comfortable. And yeah. um, I understand how he works. So in terms of being more comfortable and having a shorthand, do you feel like that allowed you guys a sense of freedom or a sense of mutual yeah. understanding for you to just do that instead of having to spend yeah. all day trying to get on each other's same page? Yeah, totally. And well, I mean, hopefully, working you don't need to spend all day trying to get on the same page never know <laughs> but um i i think it allowed us to as he said before it allowed us to create a very safe environment to do very extreme things yeah you definitely put yourself out there <laughs> in in a big way in um, in a bigger splash and also in suspiria but suspiria felt uh as i was watching it it felt like you were in a vulnerable place do you feel like you would have been able to do that same kind of thing with a different director or because of your relationship with Luca that it lent itself to that? I don't, yeah, I, I think, um, I think it was only because of my relationship with Luca. I don't think that that movie would be anything near what it is if it weren't for him. So, um, I mean, obviously, but, but yeah, I didn't, um, I think I felt or I guess maybe I seem vulnerable because I did feel vulnerable because I felt safe enough to be vulnerable. So yeah. um, that was that was important. I, I mean, what what is your vibe with I'll Luca? I'll be the one asking the questions for now. Thank you very what? much. But Se next question can't we for you. Can just go back and forth? Yes. Okay. Can I have one more question? Because it leads into what you just what, said. Like, yeah, what, what was the actual vibe on set? Because the movie itself is incredible. I mean, the tone of it feels very specific. And yeah. it feels very intense. And there's like a pervasive darkness in it almost. What was the vibe on set? I mean, you guys shot in Berlin. Was was it cold? No, was it... we shot in Italy. We were oh, in the north okay. of Italy. Yeah, okay. we shot the exteriors in Berlin, but we shot um, the, the dance academy on a mountain, on a, in a abandoned hotel on the top of a mountain in the north of Italy in a town called Varese. Okay. And on the top of this hotel were these probably like 30 telephone poles. So the building was like vibrating with electricity and everyone would go around shocking each other and everyone no. had static electricity. Yeah, it was crazy. You'd ha I'd have to like wash my hands to get the, uh, to get it out of me because water drags it out. But it's, um, it was crazy. But also on set, the vibe is there's always friends, there's always people around, and yeah. that's how he works. But it was also kind of, um, it was very cold, it was very, it was the winter, and it was, you know, um, in this sort of eerie place. But yeah. aside from the physical vibe of it, it was like fun and crazy. Yeah. It's interesting because when we shot Call Me By Your Name, also with Luca Guadagnino. Yes. Uh, I've heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> the the vibe on set felt exactly like what the vibe of the movie was. It felt like Very this laid back. Super laid back. It felt sleepy. like a vacation. Yeah. Like like I mean, if there was five minutes of just downtime while something happened, everybody would just like kick back in the grass and like open a newspaper or that drink is a coffee. Fucking unfair. It was incredible. So then I was thinking, okay, maybe this is how Luca likes to cultivate an atmosphere on set. So then when I watched Suspiria, your movie with him. I was just like, I can't what imagine what the like? vibe on set was like. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think of, of a bigger splash with Luca Guadagnino mm -hmm. uh, was sort of, it wasn't so laid back, but we were on an island. We were on like a vacation yeah. island. So it wasn't um, terribly frantic, but it right. also, I guess Matthias looked like he was like sleeping all the time. Yeah. Sort of between takes, but um, I guess I think that happens though when you're whatever film you're on the yeah. the vibe in the film kind of um, cultivates the vibe on set. So there's yeah. always an air if every, if everyone's on the same page. There's always this like a sort of life imitating art. When you dance the dance of another, you make yourself in the image of its creator. 
You empty yourself so that her work can live within you. Do you understand? Yeah. How has working with Luca deeply affected you, Army? Luca? Guadagnino. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> it, so I, I had a really interesting experience working with him uh, in so much as it was, it was really one of the first projects I ever did that was based solely out of passion. And really, I had a lot of fear about it. Uh, I had a lot of trepidation where I was like, I just don't think I'm good enough to do this job. Like, yeah. this is a very vulnerable and exposed job. It's these two people and the emotions that they're dealing with really kind of drive this film. Uh, and, if, and if it rings false or doesn't look right, it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that, that's a lot of pressure. Um, and it, it, it felt like I wasn't capable of doing it. I just remember saying that to Luke. I was like, I don't think I can do this, dude. Like this, I uh, did that yeah. on both films with him, yeah. Yeah, and he did a really good job with me, and I'm sure he did the same thing with you, of, of, of making you feel safe yeah. and saying, like, look, you should be nervous. Like, you should feel like you're going to be pushed. That's the point. Like, you're an artist. Like, you need to challenge yourself. It will make you grow. Mm. You know, that whole idea of struggle making muscle. I mean, that's the whole reason people go to the gym. Like, it, the, the harder you struggle, the more muscle you Way to on. bring it back to your muscles, Army. Uh, you know, did you say, God. is it hot in here? Should I take my jacket oh my God. off? Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, the thing with, with working on that is I did feel really vulnerable and I felt really exposed, but I also allowed myself to kind of go to that place yeah. and to do it. And the rewards were enormous. I mean, it... It also allowed me for the first time to actually consider myself without feeling ridiculous for saying it, but I considered myself an artist. Like that's what I do. Like it's, yeah. it's not paint or clay or anything like that. I work in film. And, and so if you're going to live an artist's lifestyle and do an artistic job, then you better get over it and start considering yourself an artist and then living like it and, yeah. and letting that be a, a driving factor for you. How, how did he convince you that that you should That's do these projects. That's amazing. I don't know what it is. It's such a special thing about him. But I had that. I had a similar experience when I went to. Um, I went to the island of Pantelleria to do this. It was the first time he had ever done a read through of one of his scripts, um, and I went there. And I had been kind of like traveling around Europe, and I was not in the mindset of working. Um, and I went to do this read through and afterwards I was like, I can't do this and I'm so sorry for wasting your time, but this is like, this is deserving of someone who's really talented and like, I can't, I gotta go. <laughs> and yeah. he, he and Tilda sat me down and they were like, you are so okay to do this and you can do this and this is for you and that's why you're here and we will help you if you need help and like, everything is okay and you do belong here and I think, I think having the two of them make me feel like I did belong there. I think for my whole life I've been like railing against myself thinking that someone's going to find out that I'm a fraud and that I'm like, you know, I'm not. And I think this is a thing that artists do really struggle against is this feeling of like I'm, I'm not actually deserving of of this job or of this career and I don't, and someone's gonna find out that like, I actually can't do it. Yeah. And probably the most terrifying version of that person finding out is yourself being like, oh my God, I actually can't do this. Yeah. But, but for, somehow he and Luca, I mean, uh, he and Tilda um, just kind of made it all click for me and I was like, okay, these are my family now and, I, and I'm gonna go with these people and that's what it felt like in my heart. And they were very inclusive and accepting of me. And um, and it was so beautiful. And then while we were while we were on set there, we started talking about Suspiria. Hmm. Oh, so um, it came up all the way back then. Yeah, years ago. Uh -huh. um, and he said to you, "I would love for you yeah, to play this Yeah, he said, part. "Have you seen Suspiria?" And I said, "No." And he said, "I want to make Suspiria, and I want to make it with you and Tilda." And I said, okay. <laughs> and mm. then I went and I watched the original and I was like so in. And then, um, and then again, well then uh, about a year before we started um, 
filming. I started training, so I started working with different coaches and a ballet instructor and a trainer and different sort of strength trainers to kind of change the shape of my body for when we did start filming. Mm -hmm. And even leading up to that, like so much rehearsal, a month beforehand, every day, eight hours a day, well, like five days a week, six days a week. Um, and then I still had this fucking meltdown, like a week before filming, four days before filming, and I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. And he's like, oh, here we go again. Yeah. He's like, here's a recording of our last conversation. Yeah. Just, just listen to it, yeah. you'll be fine. And I was in tears in his office, in the production office, and I was like, I'm a fraud, I can't do this. <laughs> it was awful. But it's just, now we joke about it, and we're like, that's just gonna happen every time we work together. Yeah. Can, can I ask you more about the training and prep that you did? Because you, you play a dancer, and, yeah. you, and you move like a dancer, you dance like a dancer. Yeah. It, it seemed like you'd been doing this your whole life. How long did you spend training and getting ready for it? And did you have any dancing experience prior to the film? Gosh, you're so good at this. Yeah. Um, I danced when I was a little girl. I did ballet. Okay. Um, and I, I mean, just like you do, you know, yeah. Like as the Harper probably does ballet. She yeah. does ballet, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I, that was me. So definitely not a professionally trained dancer. And when I was a dancer in my teen years, I was like definitely not the best in the class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then uh, I, I think, well, I said a year before we started filming, because we didn't really know when we were gonna shoot, so Luca and I just talked about starting, and yeah. so however long it took to get the dates going or whatever. So I started working with this woman, Mary Helen Bowers, who actually trained Natalie Portman for Black Swan, and on like muscle structure and changing the way my body looked so that I had, I wanted to have the, the physical, I wanted to have the physicality of a young woman who had been dancing her whole life but not formally trained so right. like also just running in fields and climbing trees and like kind of that's flinging that's what you did to train no <laughs> that's what i wanted her <laughs> yeah. to look like but also yeah, yeah just climb me, any tree you saw. just me on the weekends anyway yeah. when's the last time you climbed a tree uh i couldn't even tell you it's the most fun all right now that i can't even name a time <laughs> i'm gonna have to go climb a tree today <laughs> it's the most fun yeah. thing to do So obviously a big part of your character is this dancer. And, yeah. and a big part of the film are these scenes of you showing up and and blowing everyone away with your dancing. How did you guys film all the dancing scenes? Were they all kind of done together or spread out throughout the production? And then also, how did it feel for you to have to do these dance scenes? Is this a tactic so that you don't need to talk about any of your movies? Slightly, yeah. God. <laughs> um, how did it feel to film, the to film the dance scenes and then how did you actually film them? Well, the first one we shot was the actual performance of Volk, which is the okay, red yeah. rope yeah, right, yeah. dance. Yeah. Um, and we shot it as though it were an actual performance, and it was the most awful, terrifying, <laughs> because it was like... That was the first thing you shot that on was the movie, the first, period? No, like that was the one? first dance scene oh, we okay, shot. Okay. Um, and it was just so scary, because there were extras as the audience, and, and we just, it was like, okay, go and we walked in and went to our marks and danced for six minutes. That's six minutes of choreography, maybe longer. And and it was so scary. Mm -hmm. And and then after that, then it was uh, like Susie's audition piece, which was we shot a little bit later. But when we would shoot them, we'd, we'd shoot for half a day on yeah. those dance sequences because you can't, I mean, Move your body more than that and yeah. also the it was so cold and the the floor was really hard and it was like It wasn't a dance studio. It was it was like cement. Yeah, so did anybody get injured when you were doing it? I got injured. I I mean I threw my back out my feet would bleed but like, you know the usual Yeah, just another day <laughs> in the office. Yeah. yeah, just work. Let's talk about your movie Sorry to bother you on the basis of sex. <laughs> yeah, okay. Is that what it's called? That's two movies. Oh, it's two movies, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about your movie, Sorry to 
bother have you. sex with you. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about it on the basis of sex. Okay. What what made you want to make this film? Uh, I read the script that Mimi Leader, the director, sent to my agent and thought this is a superhero movie about a woman who changed the world without needing superpowers or a cape. She just used her brain. Yeah. And I like that. Uh, I, I liked the idea of, well, I liked the idea of my daughter being able to actually watch one of my movies. Like, that that was a novel idea. But then I also liked the idea of her having an example like this. You don't think she's going to, like, call me by your name? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, probably not. That being said, I'm sure her friends... Daddy? Are, yeah. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing? Oh, Dad, what are you doing? Uh, I, I liked the idea of a character like that. Uh, someone that my daughter could look up to and respect and think that, you know, maybe I could change the world if I just use my brain, yeah. you know? Um, and then I also, for my character, I, I play I play Martin Ginsburg, who is a tax attorney on his own right, but also one of the best husbands and fathers you've yeah. ever seen. I mean, he really set the bar yeah. impossibly high. Well, that's also another incredible thing for your daughter to see. I want to give her that, and I also want to give it to my son. Yeah. Where I'm like, this is the man you should aspire to be. Don't try to be like me. Be like Martin Ginsburg. Maybe you, you know? should aspire to be like Martin Ginsburg. I, I probably should. I think we all should. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I just, I loved the characters. And then I spoke to Mimi and saw how passionate she was about it. And normally if someone's that passionate about something, it's it's helpful to ride their coattails. Yeah. What did it feel like to be playing someone that is a real existing person? Uh, it was less pressure for me than it was for Felicity. Yeah. Because, I mean, she's playing... Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The legend. Yeah, who, who, there's a lot more people that know about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and the way she carried herself and the way she talked and, and her mannerisms and all that. Right. There's a lot more people who can recognize RBG than can recognize Martin Ginsburg. So I, I was a little bit freer in that. A little more that. freedom. Yeah. All I, and I knew because of that, like, I didn't have to do an impression or anything like that. I just wanted to make sure that I got the essence of the guy right. Right. You know, and so I talked to his family. I talked to his students, I talked to a bunch of people, and I was like, okay, be honest, like, Marty Ginsburg, he wasn't this great, right? Like, this th this can't be right. And they're like, no, you're right, that's wrong. He was better than that. I'm just like, what the hell do I do with that as that's an actor? That's such an amazing legacy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So getting to play someone like that who had such a strong, successful, long-lasting, symbiotic marriage seemed like the goal. Yeah. Did Felicity struggle with the with the reality of, with the fact that her character is a real person? Did I don't you know, feel? No, I, don't, I don't think it she did. It didn't seem that way to me. No, I don't think she did. I think she, I think if anything, she was thrilled to have a lot of stuff to bite down on. Yeah. Like she was able to dig. She went into the National Archives and got speeches that she'd made, arguments that she'd, ar or cases that she'd argued in court. She was able to get all that stuff and tons of pictures and all that. So, I mean, she did everything. She capped her teeth. She changed like all this stuff about her. She wore contacts, so she really, had yeah. RPG to model her character off of, right. which, which, is, which can be helpful. I mean, it's daunting, but I think it's also helpful. Yeah. Dismissive pats on the head, it, it matters, Marty. Why? You know what you're doing is important, so who cares? Okay, fine. Next time my boss gives me a clumsy compliment, I'll challenge him to a duel. Does that make you happy? I wouldn't want to hurt your stellar reputation. So each of us have made uh, studio films. Yes. And, um, We've walked away with whatever particular taste they've left in our mouths. How do you feel the difference is between working on a studio film versus an independent film? And do you find one to be more rewarding, or do you think they feel the same? Like, how does that feel for you? I've kind of, I've kind of developed this mindset about it, where it's all in how you decide it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it, the process of making movies. Sometimes with studio films, there's so many cooks in the kitchen and there yeah. are so many, um, like, uh, sort of, I, like, creative quotas you need to hit almost. It's yeah. like, you gotta get this and you need to get this joke and you have to make sure you say this. And, and with, I think, independent, more independent films, you have the, the freedom of, 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 um, really, like, finding and cultivating the magic of that movie specifically instead of trying to cater to the masses. Mm. Um, but I, I kind of realize that that makes me feel like I prefer one thing than the other, but I really, I just love making movies. So I, yeah. oh, I kind good. of just want to get to a place where I can 
enjoy both processes equally. I yeah. mean, how do you feel about it? Um, it's kind of like for me, it, it feels like apples and oranges. You know, I mean, they're they're both like you said. It's it's fun to just be able to work and to do what we love to do because as an actor, you don't get to do your art all the time. It's not like you're a, a painter who can just start painting or like a sculptor who just needs clay. Yeah. You need someone to give you a job in order for you to do what you love. Yeah, and then like a hundred more people to make it happen. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and then lightning has to strike 50 times in order for you to get from getting a script to actually being on the set on day one. Yeah. Um, but that being said, for me, like I, I'm, 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 I, what you said about independent films, about how you have the luxury of making it about that and just getting the essence of what you're doing. It feels like even if you're on a shortened time schedule, it feels like it's a gift that you have to just to just be all in there. Yeah. And you feel like you are a part of something. Like you feel like you are an integral part of making this happen. Whereas like sometimes on big studio movies, you feel like a little tiny cog in a big machine. And sometimes right. they're just like, yeah, yeah, you just, just, just say your lines. It's not even about you. We just have to yeah. do the special effect shot where we got to do this and yeah. that. So don't move. <laughs> Stand right there. Turn your head a little bit that way. Okay, now say your line. You're like, yeah. Is this really acting? Like, what, are we, like what are we doing now? Artistic prostitution. T totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that being said, like, you know, uh, the people who make these big studio movies sure have great, big, beautiful houses. But at the end of the day, like, I'm really proud to look back at the independent films that I've done and say like I, I participated and I was a part of that. Yeah. Like, it felt like a part of me as much as I'm a part of that. Yeah. And, and I just feel really creatively satiated at the end of it. I think it's pretty amazing that you have the ability to do both. Yeah, I mean I haven't made a studio film in about six years, but yeah. <laughs> you will. They haven't asked me back after <laughs> the last couple didn't work out so well. <laughs> I'm sure they will, you know, if you wanted that. Yeah, I don't know, like, I, I, I feel happy with, with what I'm doing. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to do these smaller projects. Like, what, I love it. Um, well, you're t the two movies we're talking about right now, are s your characters are basically the polar opposites of each other. In Sorry to Bother You, you were, like, the biggest douchebag in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was yeah. The, why did you want to make that movie? Uh... I loved the idea of playing a crazy character. Nobody ever asked me to play crazy characters. Yeah. I get sort of like, you just go and you just do this guy, blah, blah, and then your friend is the crazy guy. And I'm like, I want to be the crazy guy, you know? And this was really the first time someone brought a fascinating, bizarre character. And, yeah. and Boots came to me and he's like, look, man, I'm doing this movie. I, and there's no one else I want to do it except for you. I later found out that he asked about 75 people and they all said no, but thank God they said no, because I got to do it. Um, the, the thing about it was, is I was like, I get to be a character. Like, a, I don't have to be, you know, the leading man. I get to be this guy who comes in and just acts like a fucking lunatic. Yeah. And I loved that idea. Uh, and I loved his script. I loved what, what it had to say. What about that monster line of cocaine you did? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? How do you do that? Uh, I've not done cocaine. line of cocaine. Cocaine in a yeah. movie. Uh, no, it was a, it was a, it was a, I don't know exactly what it was. It was like B12 or something like that. But they had a hose that went down my shirt into my hand, and then I had the wrapped up hundred dollar bill with the hose that went into that. So I, I didn't even have to, I didn't even have to snore anything. I, I, if I just ran it along like that, it would just, it would just suck it wow. all out. So it was like a vacuum. So I just kind of mimed it and then took the $100 bill and moved my hands. So I've always wondered how they do that in movies. Yeah. Well, some, sometimes you have to actually snort And coke. it's like, <laughs> uh, no. Not, no, wait, <laughs> hold on. Wait. Not, yeah. wait. Sometimes you have to actually snort fake Coke. Which uh, is what, like sugar? Lactose powder, like Milk? whatever. Yeah. Powder? Yeah. You just it, get the worst sinus infection of your life. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, like you full on do, yeah. People get sick. I think. I think Jonah Hill, when he was making Wolf of Wall Street, like ended up in the hospital from the- One million percent. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Who knew? There you go. Find Not out me. now on Variety. <laughs> You're different, man. Make an impression. And I know you can bust a rap, right? No, actually I can't. I don't know. Come on. I can't, man. I mean, I can listen to rap well, but I just can't rap. It's actually embarrassing. <laughs> I think you can rap. I think you should rap. Rap. Rap, 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 rap. Has he talked to you about this yet? He has talked to me about it. I mean, yeah. it's the, it's not like 
a legitimate thing that's happening. No. But. And by the way, I get asked every time I do press, I was like, so are you going to do the second call me by your name? And I'm like, there's not even like. Right. But watch this watch because you'll be like, yeah, of course. And then fucking April comes around. We'll be on set doing that. Yeah. (laughs) Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so so Lucas talked to me. Has he talked to you about. Okay, so. So about doing the second call me by your name. Yeah. Uh, I literally get asked about it all the time. Do yeah, you me now? too. I do too. But it's just not um, like the ol- the most real thing about it is that it's not real. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Like everyone's like, it's so what's it about? Idea. I'm like, I don't know. There's not even a script. It's like just it's an basically idea. someone going, "Hey, we should do another one." Like, oh, that's a good idea. But yeah. it's it's almost it's like, like we should have dinner again sometime. Definitely, we should, and then it might never happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a funny thing. Uh, but it would be fun. I also feel like. The first one felt like such a special, like unique thing. Yeah, you're to like to try why? to recreate that magic. If it doesn't work, people are going to be pissed. You know? Yeah. They'll be like, "Well, you guys really," and then and then it'll go from like, it'll go, it'll "We be love on Timmy me. more than anything in the world." To army ruined. That no, movie it'll be on me. Oh, it'll, it'll be, be like, yeah, "Why'd yeah, you yeah. put her in it? She ruined it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, yeah. ruined everything." Yeah, I feel you on Timmy. that one. Timmy. 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 <laughs> Timmy. <laughs> Look at Timmy. <laughs> So, Dakota, do you think sex in movies is dead? Yeah, because I killed it. <laughs> yeah. Hey-o. Yeah, you did. Hey. <laughs> uh, um, wait, so, so. No, I don't. I don't either. I don't know. I don't know. I think that it might. I've, I never, think... I've, actually, I've also actually never heard that. I've never heard anyone say sex in movies is pretty dead. No, me neither. I don't think that will ever happen. I think movies are meant to tell uh both completely unrealistic and completely realistic stories. Yeah. So, um... And people do have sex. They do. Yeah. I think Luca fully em- embraces just kind of humanity and, like, the grittiness of it. And I think that's what I love about him and the way he he sees um, people in relationships mm. is unlike anyone I've ever known personally and unlike any film I've ever seen. It's like you can taste it. You can you can really he he's fascinated by the uncomf like how uncomfortable it is to be a person mm-hmm. and to have relationships and those feelings that are really exhilarating and also just totally um annihilating when it comes to like uh emotional transactions between people and um and i and sex is such a is such a huge part of that um and the way that i think the way that he i'm think i'm trying to think of like the way the way we shot um the sort of almost ending of a bigger splash was very vague sort of you didn't know if if my character and Matthias's character slept together or not but and and it wasn't very complicated and the story the script wasn't very complicated around it but it was like it made you feel really uncomfortable and it was fairly simple mm-hmm. and that's kind of um that made it even more sexual almost mm. i don't know i think finding the artistry in in sex for film is something that, that I don't think that will ever yeah. go away. Yeah. Especially if you respect it. Yeah, it, it, it seems like if the whole point of film is to expose and investigate what goes on with interpersonal relationships, then it would be really hard to imagine a world where sex isn't a part of that. I mean, yeah. it, it governs a lot of our interpersonal relationships. It, it has a lot to do with how we interact with ourselves and the world and all that. Um, and, I, and I think Luca's really good about trying to investigate that. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he seems to relish in the complicated nature of how human beings deal with other human beings. Yeah. But because he seems to enjoy the complications so much, it makes everything for him seem uncomplicated. Like, he he doesn't have hang-ups 
about anything. Like, for example, like if, if he calls me and I don't call him back for like two weeks or something like that, and then I call him and I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry I didn't call you. I was like, he's like, don't worry, you didn't call me. You're calling now. What's up? Yeah. I'm like, you're not, he just seems to not get. Can you imagine if that's what his voice sounded like all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> hello? <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> he just he just seems yeah. like he's not flummoxed by anything because no. he's studied human nature and interpersonal relationships so much that anything you tell him, he understands because he's read a book about it or he listened to an opera about yeah. it or he's thought about it himself. Yeah. So all these things that feel novel and weird to us, he wants to then break apart and investigate. In a really yeah, cool it's very way. expressive. Yeah. And also, I think in in studio films, of course, you don't. Ha you don't have people in sex scenes, you know, they wear bras and underwear and yeah. you're covered because sex and nudity makes people uncomfortable because yeah. people in America specifically have been sexually oppressed for so long. Yeah. So maybe it's also a testament to being a European filmmaker. Yeah. And, and to take it back to the studio system, studios only make m movies for one reason, and that's to make money. And if you put a sex scene in a movie, you will alienate half of your base. Yeah. And, and that's not what studios are about. They want to make safe films that make money. Yeah. So there's nothing that they want less than to push people away. Yeah. So Luca has the opposite. He wants to make people feel something. Yeah. He wants to, he wants to challenge you. Mm -hmm. uh, just like he challenges his actors, like he challenges his friends, like he challenges everyone. It's like he's, it's like he's a device for that in yeah. the universe. Yeah.